Hey there, first grade. How's everybody doing today? And welcome back to another remote learning math lesson with Mr. Enzi. I am going to start off today's math lesson with a little joke. What did the clock say when its owner finally came home for dinner? It's about time. <laughs> The reason I told that joke is because today we are going to learn more about the clock and telling time. So for today's lesson, you're going to want to find one of your math mats. The math mat you want to look for is the one that says, what time is it? And it has the big clock on it. Once you find that math mat, place it inside your sheet protector and you will be ready to go because I, I'm going to shrink myself into the corner. Today, we are going to be doing grade one lesson 7.11, the digital clock. And you will need your clock math mat placed inside your sheet protector. So let's review our types of clocks. Our first type of clock is called the digital clock. I have lots of digital clocks in my house. I have them on my cable box. I have it on my phone. I have it where alarm clocks are in all the different rooms. The digital clock is easy to read because it tells us our hour first. There's a little colon in the middle because that separates the hour from the minutes. And the minutes come next. So this time here says 1.30. We have a little pause between the hour and the minute. 1.30. And that's called a digital clock. However, we also have some different types of clocks. In our classrooms at school, we don't have digital clocks. We have the analog clock. In my house, I have some analog clocks also. The difference with the analog clock is it doesn't just give us the numbers. We have to figure out the time. And the analog clock has a couple of what we call hands. There's a short hand and a long hand. Now the short hand is called the hour hand. And the hour hand always points to one of these big numbers along the outside. It starts at the very top with the number 12, and then that's really like the starting point, so it's also zero. And then it goes around. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then the ending point is 12. So 12 and 0 are kind of like the same thing. So our hour hand always points to those big numbers. Now the minute hand, the minute hand is the really long hand. And the minute hand points to all these little tick marks on the outside. You can see these tick marks. Every group is worth five tick marks. Five, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 tick marks. We've taken a number line and we've turned it into a circle. Today, we're going to be taking a look at our clocks and we're going to be looking to make some times to the o'clock, or we call it the nearest hour. So, let's go ahead. And let's take a look at my clock. So you also have a clock and I want you to copy what you see on the clock, but I'm not there yet. Here we go. Right now it's 12 o'clock. Whenever my minute hand points to the very, very sky, right to the top, that's called o'clock. And every time the clock goes around, it comes to the next o'clock. That's one o'clock. 
I want you to draw one o'clock on your clock. Remember that the number one has the hour hand, and that's the shorter hand. And then the minute hand is pointing right straight to the clock, to the sky, to the 12. So go ahead and make one o'clock on your sheet protector. Now, at the bottom, we need to write the time. Well, here's how we write it. The hour comes first. The little guy wins out when we come to clocks. So the little guy is pointing to the one. And then the minute hand, the big long guy, is pointing to the o'clock. And we write that like this one o'clock. We put two zeros. So on your sheet protector, you should have drawn one o'clock. And then you should write one o'clock. Let's try another. Let's clear off our sheet protector. This time, I'm going to move my minute hand my clock always counts. See how it always goes in order? To the three, to the four, to the five. And when I go all the way around again, I come to two o'clock. Go ahead and draw out two o'clock. Make sure your hour hand is the little tiny hand. It doesn't even reach the number two. And then your minute hand goes all the way straight to the sky, all the way up to the 12. And then you're going to write two o'clock at the bottom. Two o'clock. So whenever we see the two zeros, that's our starting point. And that is called the nearest hour. Now, when I go around my clock, I come to every hour. Three o'clock. Notice the hour hand is pointing to the three and the minute hand is pointing straight up. Four o'clock. Five o'clock. Six o'clock. Seven o'clock. You go ahead and draw this time on your clock. See if you can tell me what time it is. Make sure your hour hand is the really small one and it doesn't reach the number. The minute hand is the long one and it reaches those little tick marks on the outside. Once you draw your hands on the clock, write what time it is. Did you write eight o'clock? If you did, awesome job. My clock keeps going around. Nine o'clock. Ten o'clock. Eleven o'clock. And then we get to 12 o'clock. And that's called noon or midnight. If it's light outside, like lunchtime, it's noon. If it's dark out, then we call it midnight. We're all sleeping. So whenever it's 12 o'clock, we can also call it noon or midnight, depending on what time of the day it is. Awesome job. Let's take a look at some activities. I want you to draw this time on your clock. Right now, it says four o'clock. Go ahead and draw four o'clock on your clock and then write four o'clock. Remember, the hour hand is the little hand. So we want our hour hand pointing to the four. And remember, there's no arrows at the end. It's just a little tiny line, but it goes right to the four. 
And then whenever I see those two zeros, I have to know that's o'clock. And o'clock goes right to the sky. And it's a long hand. Look how long my hand is. Ooh, look how long that is. And that is four o'clock. Did you make four o'clock on your sheet protector? Did you write four o'clock? Awesome job. Let's try another. Clear off your sheet protector. This time, make seven o'clock. Remember, the first number is our hour. So that's where the little guy, the little hand is pointing to. Go ahead and make seven o'clock on your clock. And then write down seven o'clock in the box. Since it's seven o'clock, my little hand is going to point right at the seven. Oh, the little tiny guy. And then my minute hand, because it's o'clock, my minute hand is going to go straight up to the starting point. And that is seven o'clock. Awesome job. Go ahead and clear off your sheet protector. Let's try some more. Here's another one. Ooh, this time, draw two o'clock. Two o'clock. See if you can draw it and then write down the time. Remember, my hour comes first, so that's two. So that's the little hand. He's going to point right to the two, little tiny guy right there. Boop. And then o'clock is my starting point. It goes all the way to the top. And we made two o'clock. And our last one. You can clear off your sheet protector. Let's make eight o'clock. See if you can make eight o'clock. Same thing, my hour comes first and it's eight. So I'm gonna point right to the eight. And because I'm at the starting point, my minute hand is o'clock and that goes all the way to the top. Eight o'clock. Awesome job, first grade. Today, we took a look at the nearest hour. And we not only drew our hands on our analog clock, but we wrote the time that we would see it on our digital clock. And the analog clock and the digital clock kind of go together. They both can tell the same exact time. You're going to have some activities to practice telling time. You're going to practice reading the clock and drawing the hands. And I can't wait to see how smart you are.